Hey dudes, welcome to edition 3 of XTV. This week we've got a first hand scope from the Dirty Loves final hometown show in Devonport from vocalist Aaron Damon. A new music scene's on the rise in Launceston as Zona Black finds out, and Scotty G catches up and discusses top 5 most influential albums with Soul Stickers frontman James Dilger. Stay tuned. Is there no Oh, it was good man, it was probably a chance for me. Uh, yeah, a good crowd, it was a lot of people we knew, so we had a really good time, enjoyed it. So we're going to go to the seats for a bit and then we'll be, we'll be back and um, we'll be back for sure. Hey guys, here with Zona Black. Uh, she's just discovered about a new music venue that's coming up in Launceston. So what about it, Zona? Well, the pizza pub on the corner of Wellington and Frederick Street is going to turn into Elephant and Castle on a fortnightly basis, showcasing live, loud, original music. Brilliant. So what's, uh, what's brought it about? Where's the decision come from? Well, the managers thought there's so many gigs and venues that have closed down lately, they needed to fill the gap, and that's exactly what they're going to do. So how long has it been since uh, there's been music gigs at the Pizza Pub? I actually don't know if there's ever been music gigs at the Pizza Pub, apart from maybe the odd karaoke scene. Oh, so um, when's, the, when's the first gig happening? Well, the grand opening is this Saturday, and it's going to showcase Wolf Wolf launching their, e their EP Attack. And it's going to be the last ever gig for Launceston Band Phoenix Lights, as well as Box Money just playing around, playing some launchy rock and roll. Brilliant. So what, what do you think people can expect from uh, turning up at the show? Well, it's a really intimate venue. I went and had a look at it last night and it looks fantastic. As well as that, people can get some pizza, get some beer, and there's a great cover special going on. So it's $5 entry or $20 for a pizza, a 10 ounce of beer, and cover. So it sounds like a good night to me. Sick. When's it start? This Saturday from 9pm. So I'm here this week with James Dilger from the Soul Stickers, who are our Foster Band Falls representatives. He's going to talk to us a little bit about the five albums that probably mean the most to him in terms of songwriting, and it'll give you a bit of an idea of what they get up to. So tell us about them, James. All right, I thought I'd start off with a stock standard old favourite, Nevada's Nevermind. Mm -hmm. It's been reissued recently, and it's probably one of those albums that um, was hugely influential on me, maybe looking back on it, at the sound that you can get with a three-piece and the songwriting. The next one, uh, You're My Eyes Hi Fi Way, probably the first Australian band that I really got into. Um, and apart from having, once again, being another three piece and having really great songs, they were a really uh, big gateway kind of band for me as far as turning me onto The Who or The Kinks or Small Faces and as well as that things like bands like uh, Big Star or The Replacements. Yep. So apart from having Excellent songs themselves and great, you know, an amazing three album run with this, uh, Ali Daly and Number Four Record. Yeah. There was that other side as well. And leading on from that, I've gone for uh, Tommy by The Who. The thing with this album, I sort of discovered it seeing a video of uh, The Who Life at the Isle of Wight in 70 or 71 or something. They played in their entirety? They played the whole thing. Yeah. And it was amazing. It's so. Um, much more powerful when they played it live, and it's still a really great record. Um, but just the three, well, the three musicians and the, the singer, the way that sort of just used the what they can convey with just the three instruments and the, and the voice. Another big one, another oldie, uh, the first Foo Fighters record. It's probably one of the first records I learned to play uh, guitar along with from yep. start to finish. Same with Nevermind, but this one was. Um, I think this sort of, it's probably typical of a, a, I guess a bit of a change of sound in the 90s, in the mid 90s, 
where the early sort of grunge stuff was probably more metal and punk related. Yeah. This had more of a garagey sort of feel. Mm -hmm. There's definitely more pop elements. So I guess the uh, maybe it's sort of like Beatles-ish type melodies was more uh, noticed. Uh, New Day Rising by Husker Du. Yeah. Um, this came out in 1985, and once again, it's another three-piece. Big guitar, like a wall of distorted guitar sound, but heavy melodies, and you've got two amazing songwriters in Bob Mould and Grant Hart. Where Bob Mould was sort of in this cathartic sort of punk rage, just furious songs, and Bob, uh, sorry, and uh, Grant Hart was probably more the pop side of it. Mm -hmm. And um, if you like the sound of the influences James has talked about, you can actually download their debut album. We got all things that are good for free for the month of October, but just remember to vote for the band so that you see them at Forbes as well. Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to pick up this week's Ecstatic, we've got a cover story on the Getaway Plan, and articles on Mercury Red, Soul Stickers and the Blood Poets.